There's, there's no part of your body that pollution can't reach. It can get into the bones. It can get into the brain. Nothing is a barrier to pollution in your body once you get it in. It's a, a toxic reaction at that point. That inflammation can be associated with things like um, an increase in plaque in arteries. Um, it can irritate your lungs, asthma, bronchitis, uh, those kinds of diseases, which are, are lung diseases. If your lungs are affected, your cardiovascular system can be affected. So these are traffic-related pollutants. The city itself doesn't have too many options on limiting uh, vehicles. We would be able to limit the amount of uh, trucks going through, let's say, the downtown. Make sure you have a, this continuous traffic flow, because obviously if the traffic is sitting there idling, it's producing more pollution per car, per unit of time that that car is going to be there. I know some universities will ban freshman automobiles on campus. That's one possibility here. You could ban freshmen and sophomore parking on campus. They stress to the freshmen not to bring them, but they, they haven't forced that issue yet. I guess if, if that was the case, then that would lead to less vehicles and less auto emissions. Until we get some better land use planning countywide and try to regulate some of the really disastrous shopping centers and the poor planning that has gone into those, I think we're going to continue to see traffic problems. In an optimistic view, we'll clean up the transportation system in Morgantown. We'll get a better set of roads here, optimistically. People will understand that's a key to livability in Morgantown. In fairness, WVU has also taken on an effort to try to um, encourage public sector transportation. I would hope people would be smart enough to work on their own behalf to make where they're living much more livable.